Thanks for stopping by a Catholic Wife's channel. You mean my channel? You're on my channel. No, part this one is my is channel. Me. Part one is me. It's all me, kid. In this video, we are going to be talking about a variety of topics, and we're probably going to break this up into at least two parts. And the second part, we're going to go ahead and host over there on the Bad Trads channel. So if you want to pick up where we leave off on this video, you can find it over on my husband's channel. I will link everything in the description box of this video, and I'm going to also have timestamps. I think that'll help. So if you're not interested in a particular topic, feel free to jump around. Okay, so let's just jump right in. So I thought what you want to go go ahead no i was just going to say i see a lot of the comments you know you talk about me and what i do and how great our marriage is and it is it's a great marriage i love it and i love you my beautiful bride and some people think that we either have a perfect marriage or we try to put it out that we have a perfect marriage right. we don't right we don't in any way no never put it out that way and in reality no we don't right. have that we have a real marriage and we have struggles and we're two different people we have we a argue, lot we disagree Right, but we have a lot of things that are in common, fundamental things, which I think is so important, like our faith. She beats me up regularly. I do. I do. But I think that there are things even within the faith that we don't see the same way. And so we'll talk about that in just a little bit. And I would love to hear your comments down below. If you and your husband have any issues that you don't see eye to eye on, especially as it relates to our faith. Do you want to just jump in? Let's jump in. With, with oh, the, we, do it. we had quite the... So what uh, is the... Um, Here's my thing. We go to the traditional Latin Mass exclusively. My thing is, I've noticed in our parish, there's several women that go to that traditional Latin Mass that we go to, the same Mass. And from the beginning, since we were there, and I think they, a lot of these women came after we were there, mm -hmm. they don't veil. I just had a question of, why aren't they veiling in the traditional Latin Mass? So then maybe you're coming at it from more of a place of just being curious as to the thinking behind it. Yes, and part of it, though, was I was thinking, too, are you trying to send a message here? Because I'll never forget, there was a family that came, and they sat right across the aisle from us, and they had uh, an older couple with them, which I thought was one of their mm -hmm. parents. So probably in their 70s, right? The guy made a point, and he was sitting just a few feet away from me. The guy made a point. That every time the priest said, Dominus Vobiscum, and with your spirit, he would yell it out in English. He made a point of doing that. Mm -hmm. He made a point of answering in English mm -hmm. to the Latin promptings. Right. That I took as an insult. Right. Because you're trying to make a statement here. Right. And I kind of rolled that same thing in with the women who don't veil. And I, and I do think they should veil. I will say I've made, I think, one, no, definitely two videos on veiling. And I did make a video saying, should all married women veil? Because I read an interesting article by Dr. Peter Kwasniewski, and I thought it was brilliant, and I liked it, and I shared it on my channel. And people took that, because I think a lot of times people see a title, see a thumbnail, they jump right into the comments, they don't even watch oh, no, the video. Oh, no, they won't watch it. They'll Heaven just forbid jump they in. watch the whole no, thing. No, no, no. And why would they? Yeah, we'll why would run they? into the comments, and we're yeah. going to form our opinions. Yeah. I think that that is not a hill to die on. I don't think that veiling, as while it's precious to me, it wasn't always, I'm it's a and it was a, it was an evolution. It was a a, pro, a progression for me in my faith. We, and did, I have think, we ever told a story about the first time you veiled? Yes. We, and, oh, yes. Okay. I'll link that video down below. And I just don't think that, frankly, it's anybody's business. So I think that if a woman wants to veil and her heart is in it for the right reasons and she's doing it for see, Christ, I think that that's beautiful. But I think if she's just doing it because of peer pressure or because she feels like she has to do it to be included in the Latin Mass. I think that's, for me, I'm just telling you, I think that okay, that's- but what I, I, okay. I want to be on record okay. saying, I'm not saying that you must be able to be included in the club or anything like that. Okay. It just, to me, it, it reeks of, I'm sending a message. But that's your interpretation like, of it. But you can't know that about every woman that's not veiling. Exactly. All I'm saying is that's a curiosity okay. of mine. Could you at least admit that that might be a wrong perception that you have? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. No, right? I'm, not so, saying, uh, yeah. I'm not saying that they're being counter-revolutionary right. or anything like that. This mashup <laughs> is really not going to go. What? Okay, I don't know. Go All on. right, we're going to cut that part. No, we're not. Yes, we have to. Aye. Oh, my goodness, Christopher. All right, are we done with that subject? I am more concerned that women are attending the Latin Mass. I couldn't possibly care less if they're veiled or they're not veiled. Write that down, pass it around, tell everyone that Dina, a Catholic wife, said that. 
Next topic. Disagree? Yes, I do. I'm sorry. This was a difficult week in our story. Going to share more about what happened to us? We're empty nesters now. We've been abandoned by um, now all four of the children. They left. They, they flew left. the coop. They left. So now it's just us. So Who's the talking? twins are in their senior year, and they have now moved out. They're living on in an apartment on campus. So this is a big deal for them, hard for us. They're having a great time so far and in anticipation of our move. So we had to secure housing for them. That was really the reason, I think, behind it. And it was time for them to They were have, so excited about it. They, they're they, super excited yeah. about it. And I think that we kind of got away with not having the full experience of being, you know, sending your kids off to school because we followed our second daughter up here to go to college. We, I always say the story, we couldn't all fit in a dorm room, so we got a house and then she just lived at home until she was almost done with nursing school. So we're starting to get used to it just being the two of us and then our perfect little dog, Frankie. And so he's kind of our obsession now. But I wanted to touch on a little bit is that I think that this whole empty nester thing, this whole empty nest life would have been exponentially harder had we not started this thinking about this process or whatever way back when we had little ones, little babies and diapers. And we just never allowed our children to be the center of the family. Right. You know, I know I've heard from people and that have done that, that have made that mistake and that their kids come first in every way. And we just never did that. We also, you know, our marriage came first and then everything else was secondary. Well, and there are people who will actually chastise you for not making the children Yeah, the children first, should before. never be first. Well, and that's the thing. Because if you, if you don't have a strong marriage, mm -hmm. the children are going to suffer in one way or another. So not only that, but... And we had this conversation very early on in our marriage. I know, I remember where we were when we had this conversation. Mm -hmm. We were on the patio on Ficus. Mm -hmm. The kids were all still very young. And I don't know why, I don't know what prompted the conversation, but I said, the last thing I want when the kids are grown and gone is to turn to you and look at you and go, who are you? Mm -hmm. well, right. I, I don't know you. Right. And, and you were right there. It's not yeah. that I had, I didn't have to talk you into right. it, but from, you know, from that moment on, not that it hadn't been before, but um, we've made a real effort to go on date nights, mm -hmm. spend time together alone and things like that. Always, you know, involving the kids in other areas. I, absolutely. And I think if you asked any of our four daughters, they would say the exact same thing that we always wanted to be together. We were all that was always You're the my priority. Best friend, Mama. Right. You're my best friend. I love being with you. Seriously. Sorry. You didn't put I did makeup a little bit. A little bit. Lipstick on me, did you? All right. Yeah. I hate that. And we would, you know, throw the kids out like when we're hanging out, watching TV, doing whatever, and we would get rid of them. So we've been doing that. Forever we and would, ever. We would thank God we had a lot of good family that would babysit. Too. Oh, yeah. I'm not We'd saying when they were little. Nights. I'm talking about like when they're old enough to be on, you know, self-sufficient. I'm not talking about when yeah, they're no, toddlers. I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm telling you, that's so important because we have known couples mm -hmm. that, that just, once the kids leave. It's like a vacuum. Like it's, you know, I mean, it's this void in their family because they let, they filled it with their kids and then the kids leave. I've seen a lot of couples. I, I know a few that once they were empty nesters, they couldn't stand each other mm -hmm. and things got tough. Yeah. And I, I never wanted that for you and me and thank God we, we never had no, it. So. No, so we've been blessed. So we'll see how this goes. So I think that we could just segue a little bit into an update on how we're doing with the move. And I wanted to share a little bit about real estate for life. So if you are in the position of needing to buy a home or sell a home, I encourage you to reach out to real estate for life. And if you're so inclined, let them know that Dina from A Catholic Wife sent you. And I was paired up with two amazing They've been realtors. Great. On both ends. The one here that we have, Becky, right, right. out. Right, so Becky. Becky, right out. And I'm going to share their details down below. So if it, you are in our area, I believe she just deals with East Tennessee. Well, Tri-Cities area, um, Johnson City, Bristol, and Kingsport. So if you are looking for a realtor, I will leave her information down below. And then our realtor down in Florida is Southwest Florida. And I will leave Patrick's information for you down below. And again, I just encourage you to check out Real Estate for Life. They it was, it's been so smooth, seamless with both, you know, Becky up here and then Patrick down in Florida. And he's all over it. Mm -hmm. I mean, she knows her stuff up here. Mm -hmm. Like, it's been great. It's been seamless. You know, I kind of thought, I, I didn't know what kind of real estate agents we would be getting. Right. Um, 
Let me tell you, I'm, I'm more than happy. And they are both Catholics. And so I think that that was a real draw to me. I'm assuming, I don't know this 100%, but I think with Real Estate for Life, they're just wanting people that are pro-life, not necessarily Catholics. But it was important to me that we dealt with Catholics and Patrick has a young family. So I thought that that was really cool to be able to partner up with him and have him you know, help us through this process, which is going to be the harder thing, I think. Becky, even though she has a hard job too, um, this is gonna be harder, I think, finding our, our perfect house that we want. I sent him, I think it was 21 houses. <laughs> and Patrick told me, um, yeah, no. So then I talked to Becky and she said no. Yeah, would, so, no, it turned yeah, out. That's I think because right I'm a little overwhelmed, so the anxiety is a little high. So I had to go back to the drawing board and Patrick gave me a homework assignment. So And he was totally right. In yeah, he's, he was absolutely He's just right. all over yeah. it. He's, so Real Estate for Life, I'll link them down in the description box of this video. Very happy. All right, so the move. Is that, is that all so we move? are getting closer to the time of the move. We've been through, I think, all of our hurdles so far. If you've sold a house, you know there's all the things you have to go through, appraisals and inspections and all that good stuff and showings and dealing with real estate people and contracts and all the fun stuff. So we are in the end part of that process. So now we can really focus in on the area that we want to move. So when we had our idea of where we wanted to go, there were certain criteria that we needed to have. And being in proximity to our granddaughter and our oldest daughter was on very top of the list. And then also having the ability to attend the Latin Mass. Now there's a lot of different opportunities to attend the Latin Mass in Florida. We never attended the Latin Mass in Florida when we lived there. It wasn't until we came here to the Bible Belt that we found the Latin Mass at our parish, and we're so thankful for that. But when we would go back on vacations, we would get to go to Latin Mass parishes there, and they were amazing. Diocesan Latin Mass parishes. Yep, yep. Father Ellie. Yeah. So Father he, we Brian, actually, I think, in Vero Beach. So Father Ellie, we had at our parish in in Palm Beach Gardens, at the. You got to put up a photo. That photo. Yeah, with it. I he, will. Our, He's one Marvel. of our absolute favorites, and Love he's Father Ellie. such a great man. So we got to have the Latin Mass. We he's, didn't even know that. I don't think that we knew that he was the pastor when we went. I think no, we no, just I knew, knew he was the pastor, and I knew he was going there. But did you not know that he was celebrating the Latin Mass? No, uh, I, I was wondering maybe they're going to bring something. But in the story about how yeah. the bishop asked him to go to Chicago to learn the Latin Mass, and right. he he didn't. And he's he from like, Haiti. Yes, he's a Haitian priest. He's, he's, so and he's just so full of joy. It's, he's it's, always happy, huge smile all the time. It was Ellie. always like that. But he, it's in the, the the way he tells the story, he's like, "Oh no, Bishop, I cannot. I, I don't." And it, yeah. <laughs> but he made him go, and he's so happy that he did. He's right. so happy that he learned. And it's you so got to share that one photo of with him, him with, with the little that boy, little boy. The first Holy Communion. Oh, it is That's such a beautiful photo. That's my favorite. Only, the, I think. I'm not sure if it, I love that one more or the one where the he baptism. did the baptism and he's like holding this little baby up and offering the baby to the Lord. And it was just so beautiful. And that was at our Novus Ordo parish that we just love him so much. So we have been able to go back to Florida and attend the Latin mass there. So we wanted to attend a FSSP parish. That was very important to us when we were looking. Well, there's only, I think the FS, FSSP parishes are either in central Florida or West Coast. I don't think yeah, there's any, there on, the any on the East Coast. Coast where and we're, we're East from. Coast people. So we are having to go to the West Side this time. I'm going to do it. Should I do it? No, no don't, I'll do don't. it. Okay, I won't do it. She and, has a, like the gang symbol yeah, for West. West Stop side. it. Stop. You'll get shot. I don't care. So anyway, so we are going to go on the, to the West Coast FSSP. One of the benefits or I don't know what the word is but there's also the ability I think the Anglican Ordinariate is there I think Byzantine. there's Byzantine there is not that they FSSP. do the traditional mass but it's another traditional option for us right. we've never been to there's also the SSPX we've also never been to but it is something that we have both can we just discuss that yeah too? let's talk about it let's jump in you know one thing that really angers me is you've mentioned that the SSPX is an option. Right. We've never been to an SSPX chapel. Can I interrupt you Absolutely. for just a moment? Absolutely. Was the SSPX ever a struggle for you as the husband yeah. and father of this family? Absolutely. So it wasn't just a, a mindless oh, no. thing because no. Taylor Marshall told you to do it, so then you oh, just did Oh, well, it. you know, I do everything Taylor Marshall I know, says. I know, Because um, I get told that all the time. Mm -hmm. You're just a Taylor Marshall clone. Right. Or, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, if anybody knows me, I do my own research. 
on everything, and it's a deep dive, okay? And what about when your wife and your children are on the line? Is it any more even pressure? Even deeper, oh, even harder, okay, yeah. Okay. So, so this wasn't a just... No, it wasn't a willy-nilly kind of thing. Oh, okay. I read everything I could on the SSPX. I read about N.O., bishops, you know, and some traditional bishops like Athanasius Schneider, awesome guy, mm -hmm. awesome guy. That we met. Yes, we did, and got a blessing yes. from as a, as a couple. And the thing is, they're not in schism. Schism, schism. Have we decided what we're, how we're going to pronounce that? That's how I'm going to say it. I've heard people say schism. Okay, right. but they're not. They're in an irregular situation. If we were to go, we would not incur a sin if there was any sin at all. If there was any sin, if, it would be on their part. But my thing is, Pope Francis, who's trying to get rid of the Latin Mass, gave them faculties to hear confessions and to witness wedding or marriages thing is so you can hear confessions give absolution and then you walk a few feet to the altar and all of a sudden but can you celebrate don't you celebrate a mass at a nuptial no? sure do i mean i know they can do it without a mass but, right but yeah, but you think the sspx would? no but so what my point is just because we said if all else fails we would love to stay diocesan tlm I love the FSSP and how they how they conduct business. Trust me, but okay, the, the SSPX is it's an not option. off the table. It's not off the table. All of a sudden, we you said that at one point. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, people lose their mind. We're SSPXers. We're schismatic. We're setting the contest. We are setting the contest. Yeah. Give me a break, people. I don't so, think people even know what that means. They don't. That and we've been called Pharisaical. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you learn the definition before you try to ascribe it to somebody? Yeah. But, but you I know, thought that the Sede one up for me was was quite yeah. Meanwhile, precious. we complete, and I've said it on my channel. You have said it on yours. You have been critical of Pope Francis noted, on your channel. Noted. Now I would say that, and maybe this can just a little pivot away. I've been on YouTube for five years now. I think I'm going up on like what is it? Oh, you're creeping up two. Well, you're well past two and a half million views, almost getting to three. Okay. So I've been doing this for a long time. And I think that when I first got into YouTube, and I think that you're experiencing this now, I was very passionate about the church and understanding what was happening and the things that were taken from me or I felt were taken from me that I lost, that I didn't know. And so much of my faith was just, it almost felt incomplete and I felt robbed. And so when I would come on and I would make the videos, it was coming from that place. And I think a lot of that had to do with hurt. I was just going to say. And brokenness it, I, I was just about say it. it. You were hurt. We so, were both hurt. Especially I, after traditionalist custodians. Right. And I think a lot of people, you see a little video, whatever, and then you add all this other, you fill in the blanks. And you think that you know. But I promise if you were sitting across the table from me and we just had a conversation like normal people, and it wasn't just this weird thing over the internet, it would be a different story. I mean, I think that there are some people that are just, they're just going to hate me no matter yeah. what. And that's okay. No matter what there's you no, say, it doesn't matter. you're going to get there's, hate. No matter sure. what I say, they'll hate me. And then there's other people that no matter what I say, they'll come back. And they'll still see me as a sinner, but as a person who's striving for Christ and just trying my best right. to and do. you don't put on airs. You don't sit there and try to put yourself forward That's as some kind not. of great Catholic and this is what you should do. I do this, so you should do this. You've never said that. No, but that's what they believe. From the, from the beginning, you have always said, this is just what I do. Right, do what you want to do. Do, do exactly what you want to do. I'm just telling you what I do. Right. It maybe works it helps, for me. maybe it doesn't. Exactly. But no, you tell, you're divisional. I love that, yeah. divisional. And you tell other people that if they don't do it certain way, I, it's amazing how people make up things. Well, I think that they've got this script going in their minds and they've got they've had it for so long that they need to believe it. And there's people like remember that video that I did where I taught where we I said, would you rather commit a mortal sin or go to the Novus Ordo? So of course people saw that title. And yes, it was a little bit I wanted you to click the video. It wasn't clickbait because I delivered on what the title was. And I think a lot of people don't have an understanding of what clickbait actually means. But my point was is if you are a person who goes to the traditional Latin Mass like we do and you're in a situation where you cannot get to a traditional Latin Mass, there are people who would not go to Mass at all, and they would do other things. We're just not there. So for us... I, I, I'll never be there. Right. So okay? I'm just saying... If so I for, can't get to a traditional Latin Mass, I'm going to an NO Mass. Right. To fulfill my Sunday obligation. 
yet and that was the situation that we were in we couldn't it was a holy day of obligation we couldn't get to the latin mass so my question was to people if you're in that situation what would you choose and people spun that even oh made goodness. videos about it oh yeah implying that i was saying go to the novus ordo if you go to the novus ordo you're going to commit a mortal sin right and that is a lie. That's not what the video was. That's not what I said. And of course, they didn't watch it. Another and they example won't... of not watching it. But right. They went off the, the right. title. And it's it's just really, it's really gross. Fellow Catholics. Yeah. That's Fellow the Catholics gross. doing that. Or that chop the videos up and, and splice them back together to make them say something different. Like, but you like, want to... like some guy in yeah. Australia. And yeah. I'll get to that too. I'll get to that. But, but let's talk know... about that on your channel. I don't want it, my channel to be gross. All right. Yeah, fine. Okay. And it is gross to it talk about. It is getting gross. It's gross. Okay. No, but, and that's, that's exactly my point here. You've never, ever said to stay away from the NO mass. You have said that there are issues with it. Okay. The way it's been implemented. And maybe this is another point of division that we will, or a place where maybe you and I don't always see. Don't be divisional. I feel like don't be I divisional. Feel, <laughs> I think that you are a little bit more tolerant of the Novus Ordo. Yeah, I, I grew up in. I was steeped in it. Right, and so I wasn't. Even though I've been Catholic my whole life, I didn't really become Catholic. Catholic until after we got married. So, I mean, it's not like that was my whole identity or my life. You know, you grew up with Novus Ordo priests. You never went to a Latin mass until we went to one Didn't together. Didn't existed. Right, so well, I mean, you have were, a love for I, them. Not, not just grew up, they were over our house all the time. We went to the beach with them. They were a part of our lives. Right. And they were, you know, they were some fantastic priests, very courageous, very holy men who happened to be N.O. priests. They were all basically N.O. priests right. back then, except for FSSP and right. SSBX. And then the priests that we had in our marriage, all N.O., we had an N.O. priest who married us. So, I mean, it's not like the N.O. has not been a part of our lives. And I think still a lot of it for me is that place of what was what has been lost that can't be made up. My and there is some resentment there yes. for yes. that. And I think that that's where a lot of it stems from. And I have said, I, in no way am I saying that I think that the, it's not a valid map, any of the things. I mean, it, it's boring at this point to keep, and I'm I not going to go ahead and do these disclaimers. I mean, there's people, no matter what I say here, there's going to be somebody out there who's going to believe what they want to believe and go ahead and believe it. You do you. But I'm just telling you, for me, I am a better Catholic right. for going to the Latin Mass. It makes me be better. It's better. It Amen, challenges sister. me. Amen. And that's why, I mean, it was a long time, I think, before I, I mean, I think our kids were in, the twins were getting ready to receive their first Holy Communion before I had gone back to confession. Yeah, because you went with them. You went I the went same with day my, day all the Catholic first confession. Mom, Right. And so that was a long time for me. And I was going to the NO. We were going to the NO for a long time at that point. And going to confession was not on my radar. I wasn't thinking about it. And that's what I'm talking about is that I'm afraid of the Catholic that I would be if I slipped back into going to the Novus Ordo. Because when I was in the Novus Ordo, I didn't care about my faith. I didn't prioritize it. I just was You did at some point. We, we, we sure. When we really got back into the faith, you were serious. I was serious about the faith, but I didn't see my sin. I didn't see my faith life the same way that I do now. And I think that the Latin Mass kind of magnifies things and it kind yeah. of oh, yeah. like puts a spotlight on the areas of weakness in me. Yes, especially when you couple that with the homilies mm -hmm. that a traditional Latin Mass right. priest will often give and the devotions that come right. along with the traditional Latin Mass. Right. You do see yourself in a, in a different, different light. Oh, you and absolutely that's why, do. And it's not a matter of being scrupulous. And I know people will throw that out as well. That, that you, you have know, scruples. Yeah, I have scruples. I heard that. Yeah, you have scruples. Come on. Yeah, so being scrupulous. And it, it isn't that. It's just that I think I have, and like Father told you, a well-formed conscience. And I know when I have gone off the... And this channel does keep me in check in terms of having to get back to confession. But I think that it, that's the reason why I love the Latin Mass so much and I need it so much in my life is because of the Catholic that it has helped me become. And That's how can it. that be a bad thing? Well, someone will twist it No, but you make, make an idol bad. of yeah, the traditional Latin it. Mass. No, we've never said that people go, who go to the NO, and that's, that's the difference. We have said, if the NO is your thing and it brings you closer to Christ, God bless you, mm -hmm. go for it. I think that is the distinction, is that I don't make it about people. The people that go, I don't make it personal attacks on people who go to the Latin or to the Novus Ordo. Do what you want to do. My issue with the Novus Ordo is about the Novus Ordo. 
not about the people who attend the Novus Ordo. That is a great distinction. Mm -hmm. Great distinction. And I, I'll never forget, the turning point for me was when we were down at uh, Holy Ghost in Knoxville. And Father Michael Hendershot, traditional priest, N.O. priest, though, he does that, whatever. It's an N.O. parish, but happens to also do the traditional Latin mass. I hate that I have to keep throwing that kind of thing. I think you should stop. Okay, but anyway, so in his homily, he was talking about the rite of baptism mm -hmm. because they were going to have one. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. They were going to have mm -hmm. a baptism in, in the traditional uh, form. And he talked about it. And he said, well, that's why the baptismal font is up front, blah, blah, blah. And you don't actually come into the church itself until this happens. That happens because you're being welcomed into the church. And when he talked about how the priest in the traditional Latin Mass puts the stole over the baby. Mm -hmm. I hate this <clears throat> that I'm getting like this. But it's so beautiful that the priest is claiming that baby's soul for God. Mm -hmm. That struck me so hard, right. and I got angry. Right. That's not done anymore. Right. And I, and I and I remember I went back to the the Godfather when they have that baptism scene as Michael's killing everybody, but they're doing the baptism. It's in that baptism, and I always wondered why the stole was put over the baby. And when I heard that from Father Michael, as far as why that happens, I got angry. Mm -hmm because that was stolen from us. That kind of thing was stolen right. from us. Thank God I was baptized under that, showing my age. But our kids weren't, you weren't. No. So. And that's, I think, that's where the passion comes from. I think that's where the desire to just have everyone know about it. You know, there's so many people who don't know. They've never experienced it. They might be of the same mind that we were, that it's just the Novus Ordo said in Latin. But I think when you see, and if you haven't seen the Mass of the Ages and the amazing work that they have done over there and explained what has happened or the books by Dr. Peter Kwasniewski, how our birthright was stolen from us, so many of us, that's where it's from. It's not about the people who attend the Novus Ordo. It has nothing to do with the people who attend the Novus Ordo. It's about the abuses that happen. It's about what was taken from Catholics. Some of the best Catholics I've ever known go to the NO exclusively. They are right. God-loving. They're, they're the best. They'll beat me to heaven every day. Right. I, and that's maybe another point is I need the Latin Mass so desperately so I. to help me stay on the narrow path to Christ. Because if left to my own devices and I'm in the Novus Ordo and there isn't that focus on my sin <laughs> and all the things that are wrong in me, I'm afraid of what will happen to me. I really am. I won't let you go down that road. Thank you, Pop. I won't let you. Thank you. Since we have a new YouTuber in the family now, someone who has joined joined me in the fight in here, joined me in the Entered arena. The yeah. I used to get comments all the time. Is your husband going to make a channel? Is your husband going to do a channel? And I used to always say no, because we thought YouTube, was, it's enough for one one person. I hated being coming on your channel. I, I hated know, it. I know. But you have jumped in the arena, and you are doing a different approach to Catholic YouTube than I am doing. So you probably hear our dog's that's collar. That's so Frankie. If you Frankie. Aren't, Sorry. If you are not subscribed, this is uh, my husband's channel is The Bad Trad. The Bad and Trad. And he here. does totally different things than what I do. What do you do over there on. Oh, well, well, get to me. Talk about the state of your channel. Let's stay, let's stay with your channel. So, as I said earlier, I've been on YouTube for about five years now. And for a long time, I was pretty hot and heavy with my channel, pretty consistent with what I was doing. And life has just pivoted for me over the past year. So, it's been harder for me to stay consistent on my channel. I'm not ready to, you know, to bow out just yet. I still think that there's a lot that I can still share in my journey of a Catholic who has come into a traditional mindset. And I'd love to share with you, you know, the move and what it's going to be like going to the FSSP down in Florida and all of that. So I do think I still have some more videos in me that I can share. But I do feel like my channel has mellowed a little bit from where it was, especially at the beginning. And I am happy now with where it feels like it's kind of settled in. I think I have a core group of subscribers who watch my videos. Great people. And don't always agree with me and will tell me that I don't always but agree with you. But they're great people. I, I see the comments because I help you out with them. Right. And thankfully he does because I, I don't see a lot of the nastiness. Because for me, 
it's just too, I don't like to engage in that. I used to at the beginning. I would fight back, and I'd end up in confession. And I'll, well, and I'll just let you know if you send a nasty comment, it's gone before she sees it. So don't even bother. Because I go to bed at like eight o'clock at night, and <laughs> because I get up at like four thirty-five now, and so I'm more of a morning person. My husband has always been a night owl, and so he monitors my comments. And so the nasty one, and I tell I don't even want to know. Don't even tell me. I leave me. everything else but the nasty right. comments. So that, if there's that's... anything gross, he's just going to deal with it. And so yeah, so I don't even see it. So and, let's, and we already touched on it a little bit, but I would really like to address the whole Catholics who attack other Catholics thing. Okay. Okay. And I know you, it's so funny, but you, you don't care. I mean, you, you know, you're like, Hey, I'm in the arena. I know I'm going to get attacked. It's no big deal. I think for me, what it is, is it surprises me. I think that that's what it is. And I think that from that place of, it's just so uncalled for to me, I, I just don't understand well, the mindset of they, a grown person, a grown adult. Taking well, the time to, there's some to do pe- that. Well, not like, yeah, because there's some, there's one lady from Massachusetts, and I'm not going to say who she is because you barely even know this because there's a lot I've kept from you on that. But uh, she has, she's got a tiny, tiny, tiny channel. But she, it, looking at her channel, it looks like she does nothing but pour over everything that you've done. It's like obsessed, right? Yeah, maybe she packed the car too far and she's just out of her mind now. But she's attacked anything traditional. She attacks anything. And she's made up out of whole cloth, just lied about your channel and what you've said on your channel. And it's funny because I told Dina about a lot of And she's like, who? <laughs> she's like, I don't, I don't I think maybe at some point. I don't know. And I'm like, but, but as your husband, my first reaction is to come to your aid, to, right. to come to your defense. And so far, I've ignored her. And because she's also said that she deletes any comments that challenge her. So mm-hmm. that's that's real adult. That's, you know, whatever. But it just it's amazing that she purports to be a fellow Catholic, but she's going to sit there and basically commit calumny for clicks, I call it. You're going to commit, commit calumny for clicks. She lies about what you say and do on your channel. And then when people actually thumbs down her, her videos, she claims that you as the queen bee have sent all these people, because you're just her minions, you're just her minions, and she has sent all these people, this Harpies channel, to thumb down everything. It's like, you're not that important, lady. You, you come, you're not that important. Dina has no idea who you are. Dina doesn't care who you are. Well, I mean, the only reason I knew who she was is because she tagged me in the video. It's just, like you said, it's gross. And then you've got that, some, some guy trying to be charitable in Australia that took one of your videos, mm-hmm. chopped it up to make it sound to make it like sound I said, like you said. I didn't. Yeah, the, the best was you said it, the the video was. We're common, was reading the questions that people. Well, no, no, but yeah. the the common. Uh, oh right, the common um, stumbling blocks that people have with the right. Latin mass. The, some of the reasons why people give for not attending the Latin mass, one of which was, I don't speak Latin, I don't understand Latin, I don't like Latin, whatever. She gave it as one of the reasons other people give for not going to the Latin Mass. This guy chopped it up and then said, well, she admits that she doesn't speak Latin, she doesn't understand Latin, yet she goes to the Latin Mass. Boy, that's really, come on, really? So, you know, look, we both are adults here. If somebody has an, an, an actual, a real, genuine disagreement with you you'll engage i've seen it you're well you know what we'll agree to disagree and you go on whatever it's very charitable and you move on but don't make stuff up don't lie to a fellow catholic and there's just this handful of them i don't want to spend too much more time on right. it because i but, think it's so gross but look at michael voris let's bring up michael voris for a second okay. All right. you never watched anything of his you other had, than when you would put him on I, no I, no like sometimes every once in a while he would say something that was good and i would go wow that makes sense and i would mm-hmm. show dina I wasn't a big fan of Michael Voris from the beginning. I wasn't. Every once in a while, it's like the broken clock. Right. That's you know. Like he w- he had a real uh, he had a real problem with the SSPX. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, and w- this was prior to us even even entertaining anything tradition with- in general. He right. Had a problem so he with. had an issue with it. The, his vi- it didn't resonate with me. I wasn't making videos about the man. I wasn't doing anything. But you, when what happened 
happened. And I'm not saying he was in the right in any way. I think that what he did to people was terrible and horrible what he did. And Church Militant as a whole, what they did was terrible. But to see other Catholics rejoice in his fall and to just celebrate that. And that's kind of what to you give see. give a toast with yeah, a give drink. A yeah. And it's just, you have Catholics who are wishing for people to fail, to leave the faith. I mean, just celebrating all of this. And it, it just really bothered me. So I did make a video about that, about Michael Voris, not singing his praises, not explaining away anything he did. I think he will answer for every single thing that he did and said and how he hurt people. And I wasn't condoning that in any way, but I also think that it was absolutely abhorrent what other Catholics did to celebrate his fall. Rather than praying for this man, even though he might have hurt you. or what, I think that's what we're called to do. We are? To Wait, pray are? for, right. Oh, pray for yeah. the people who hate you and persecute you. And you're supposed to love your neighbor and all the things. That's all but, your video was about. Yeah. And you got attacked mercilessly, mercilessly over that. That's okay. That's okay. But, and I, I, and I want to go back to pack the cat too fa, lady. Um, if anybody doesn't know, that's, um, that's my best attempt at a Boston accent. But, um, when she attacked you and then that guy from Australia attacked you, you did have people unsolicited, subscribers of yours, mm -hmm. that came to your aid. And you know she's watching because she watches all my videos. Good. I'm glad. Have at it. But uh, Kara? Yes. Oh, my goodness. You had her back, Kara. And I will, I will be forever thankful. You. That's one of the. That's one of the kind of people you want on your side. Absolutely, like, she had your back. She was right still there. Still has with your me, back. So I'm going to miss her. And, and I told Kara if she's ever down our way in Florida, she's got to come and look. For Great me up. family. Her but and her husband. They're and just her, a beautiful family, awesome. and they are converts to the faith. And I'm so thankful that I got to meet her at our parish. And, and she comments on my videos. She oh, watches. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. She and her so, husband watch my videos. And you know that's one of the positives that I wanted to say because I don't want to end it on a negative, but. I have 99.9% .9 amazing Catholics on my channel from all over the world who comment and have been with me through this five years. You know, people come, they go, whatever. And not all those people agree with every single thing that comes out of my mouth. I understand that. but You wouldn't work that. No, but they're good people. They pray for me and my family and they support what I'm trying to do. And I'm just so grateful. And one of the coolest parts, and it's a little bit uncomfortable for me, but it, it is one of the cooler parts about having this channel, is we like to travel. And when we travel places, we always prioritize going to the mass, no matter where we are. And so we've had so many opportunities and it's kind it's not a brag, it isn't, but it's just such no, a cool you hate, thing. No, I you hate, don't hate it. You don't hate it. It's, I you, hate it because it makes me feel You like meeting the people, but right. she gets recognized at traditional Latin masses, even non-traditional, and even I know. Right. And even when we went to the CIC. The Catholic Identity, Identity Conference. Right. Yeah, and it's so funny to watch you squirm, because it's like, Because I don't believe my, it. Like, do I don't believe that channel? anybody but my husband and Renee are watching my videos, so it's like so crazy to me that other people in other parts of the country have actually ever seen me. And so when people comment from, they're from different countries or whatever, it's amazing to me that through our shared faith, People that I'm never going to get to lay eyes on probably in my life are watching my videos or commenting or praying for me. And I just think that that is the greatest gift of this whole channel. And the one thing that I love the most is that this channel keeps me so humble and keeps me in the confessional. And it just really highlights the places of weakness that I have and not being a reactionary Catholic to when people try to poke me and get a rise out of me and just trying to turn the other cheek. And it is hard because if you know me in real life, I am like a scrappy person who wants yeah. to like, yeah. and it's hard to dial that back when you've been like that for your whole life. I'm I happen trying. to like that about you. I do. I but. know, but I'm trying to dial it down and just be more, you know, just like Harlan's grandmother and just be like calm yeah. and like maybe knitting. I don't know what I'm going to do, but, but I still got me, that feistiness in to me. To me, it's, it's a thrill. Because, you know, for so many years, you were the major's wife. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was, you know, because I was kind of the focus. We lived in the same city I worked as a police officer. You grew up in that city. So up, everybody, everybody knew, knew me. Yeah. And, and I was, you know, the number four in command of my police department. So it was Dina is Major Barker's wife or whatever. So it was so great to see you have something of your own like that and mm -hmm. gain even a little bit of notoriety, whatever. And so I just love it when I see people who recognize you come up and they just want to engage with you 
and tell you how much they appreciate your channel. And you get so embarrassed, though. It it's is so funny. Cause, and, and she kind of freezes up. She's like, you actually watch my <laughs> And I'm like, Dina, you have to why engage these people yeah. more. You know, ask them about themselves. See, that's why I'm telling you. The reason I still have this channel is because of you. Because there's been so many times where I'm just like, what is the point? Why am I doing it? And not only you. Like, I will have that thought. And I'll get a comment or I'll get an email or something. And I'm like, okay, that's why. That's why. You, so it's yeah. not the haters who want me to just, like, curl up in a corner or something. It's not them. It's, you know, it's just amazing to me that there's people like that out there. But like recently we were in mass that was in awesome. Knoxville, one of our favorite, favorite parishes at Holy Ghost. Yep. And we had gone to mass there and we were leaving and we, I don't even think you were with me. Like where no, were no, you? No, no, we were walking together. You were, uh, I, I we were a little bit, were you? Yeah, we were. And then, um, we heard somebody call out. Um, oh yeah, yeah. 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 So, so we were walking out to the car and then somebody had called out and we turned around and they, he had Greg. asked me, yeah, Greg had yep. asked me, we had never met him before and asked if, if, um, did he say, are you? Are no, you? he knew, he knew. He was just like, um, but you know, he said, I recognize you from right. your channel, blah, blah, blah. And it's so great to run into you. And we had the greatest conversation. Yeah. And you've been texting with him ever yeah, since? Yeah, yeah. We, we exchanged phone numbers. Yeah. We took a photo. We got to put a photo up of Greg right. with us. Yeah. And what a great guy. What a great guy. And just having that shared connection of a passion for I the I consider him a friend. Us. Oh, yeah, I, for I consider, sure. I mean, we've been texting, like you said, we've been texting back and forth yep. now since, and it's been a few weeks. Yeah. And I've uh, gotten to know him over text, and I can't wait to meet up with him right. and, his, and his bride right. uh, again and, and then spend I was some time with him. I was in confession the other day, and it was a person I had never seen before, and he said, are you on the internet? <laughs> And I was like, and he's like, are you a Catholic wife? And so I'm like, yes, I am actually. And apart from being on the internet, I am a Catholic wife. But, and so it's really cool to see that happen. And it's just really fun. And I, and I am excited to see that happen for you when people start recognizing you. The, well, the only reason they recognize me is because of your no. channel. Being, no, no, being on your channel. Well, no, and then your own channel. Like that I great couple right. from uh, when, when I met them at the uh, Basilica oh, in Chattanooga right. when yeah. I went down there with, yeah. with uh, one of our daughters. Um, they only recognize me because of your right. channel, but yeah, and I'm, I'm fine with that. I, I don't. I'm not. I didn't start my channel for notoriety. Not that you did, but no. I, I, you know, and we'll get. But into I think that our purposes we, are very different. You know, I think different. mine was more of kind of documenting my journey of being a cradle Catholic, coming into tradition, and all the ways that I get it wrong, and a few ways that I get it a little bit better not even right, um, and just sharing it, just so that other people, like you're not alone in this process. You right. know, there are people, there are Catholics that are squared away, they don't struggle, they've got it all locked down, they've got 15 kids and they've never made a mistake or whatever, that's the impression that I have. But then there's people like me and my husband, like we're just like, you know, struggling and like <laughs> falling like and we're in the confession. Two idiots just stumbling our way. Right, and just trying yeah. our best and not always our best and just sharing that experience. And what's the purpose behind you starting your channel when you saw how much fun I was having? Yeah, I know. Well, my thing was I, I got sick and tired of watching Protestants and not Protestants, Prots. And I make a distinction between... People of goodwill, Protestants of goodwill, who have genuine disagreements with Catholic theology or whatever, or have questions, I will engage with them all day long in a charitable fashion. But when you have anti-Catholic Protestants who lie about the faith, make things up, just flat out erect straw men, and then attack the Catholic faith, and I would see these videos, they would pop up. I don't go searching for them. I stay, I don't care. I stay out of the, you know, the big difference is they come on a, onto Catholic channels and they attack. Me, sometimes they, these things show up in my feed. They're shorts, so I watch them real quick. I just got so frustrated that I would go into the comment section because my fear was there were low information Catholics watching these things mm -hmm. and maybe being drawn out of the church. Right. So I'm just trying to, no, that's not true. That's not what we do, blah, blah, blah. So then I would get attacked even worse or they would delete my comment. Or they would come back and write a book, okay, War and Peace, about, you know, how the Catholic Church is wrong. And then I try to answer all of those things, which means my comment's long. My comment would get, this, uh, would get deleted. I don't know if it's a tech overlord thing or these, all these channels are doing it. So I was like, I, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> even, even if nobody watches my channel, at least I get it off my chest. Mm -hmm. So the original intent... For the, for the channel 
was as a response to these anti-Catholic prots, okay? And, but I also wanted to mix in some good stuff, you know, and show mistakes that I've made as a Catholic husband and father over the years, especially, you know, for the younger guys that are either just getting married, maybe even aren't even, aren't even married yet. You know, hey, don't do what I did. You know, do, do better and, you know, this is how you can do better. So that's why I started the channel. And, you know, it's funny, but at first I'm like, hey, I don't, I don't care if anybody watches, whatever. And I just said that too. But once you get in it, you're like, oh, I got more subscribers, you know, whatever. And it's not that it's not an ego thing. It's, hey, I'm reaching more people maybe. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So what's that, been your favorite part of being on YouTube? Just being able to get things off my chest and, and feeling at some level in my tiny, tiny little way with my tiny, tiny little channel that I have helped defend Holy Mother Church. Mm -hmm. And I have actually had a, actually a few comments, more than a few comments saying, hey, you really helped me here. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I appreciate the way you, you know, you defend the church and, you know, and how you clarified this or that. So has anything been surprising about YouTube that you didn't anticipate or a lot of work? I, yeah. I didn't know how much work goes into yeah. being a, you know, or doing a video and I've gotten on you, you know, Dina, it's been a couple of weeks, man. You got to put another video out. Come on, mm -hmm. let's go. But so it's a lot of work and you do, <laughs> you do 99% of my editing, any of the B roll or any photos that I, I still don't know how to do that. So you have to do that. I'm not a Luddite. I just haven't had the experience that you do with it. And then I noticed I did a video on purgatory and, and this was, I think this is just an experience thing. It comes mm -hmm. with experience in doing videos, but uh, an anti-Catholic prot had some said something about purgatory, you know, one off about the church and purgatory. So I went to go defend purgatory, the doctrine of purgatory. And I, but I, what I didn't want, because I'm not a theologian, I'm not a, a, a real apologist, I'm just an armchair apologist. And I wanted to give other just armchair Catholic guys a little bit of ammunition to go back at these attacks with. So I didn't go into real detail and I didn't put forth all the arguments that prove purgatory because mm -hmm. I didn't want it to be a 45 minute just droning on about purgatory. So I didn't, I didn't go into a lot of detail and I left myself open for more attacks from Protestants mm -hmm. because I, I think I didn't put in enough, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, but that, that it's a, le there's it. a learning curve and it just comes with experience, I think. Mm -hmm. But overall, it's been a great experience. I, I, I do like, the creative end of it is, is in terms of, you know, putting it out there. And I have had people from India mm -hmm. already watching my stuff, uh, UK, uh, places like that, which right. is really cool to me. Yeah, I think so too. And the comments have been very encouraging. And I've had Catholic guys, okay, um, kind of try to do, you know, for, fraternal correction, you mm -hmm. know, saying, hey, you know, you're not being real charitable. And then, but when I explain, because I think, like one the last video I did, somebody jumped in and was like, yeah, you can do it more charitably. But once I explained the difference mm -hmm. between what a prot is and what a Protestant is, mm -hmm. he was like, oh, I get it. Okay. And, and I'm like, yeah, go back, watch, you know, right. my first few videos. And he was all about it. So Good. yeah, I, I enjoy it. So was there a video that you've put out recently that surprised you? Like on how many views you got on it or one that you thought maybe would have resonated more with your audience? Most of them. <laughs> But, you know, and, and that's the thing. You put out a video, and within an hour, you've got way more views than I get ever on any of my videos. And I, the struggle is not to put my expectations for my videos mm -hmm. based on what right. your, your channel does, because it's, to me, it's a huge channel. So, um, yeah, I, you know, the, I think the video about my guardian angel helping to save me uh, in a fight with a suspect, and it was a... I don't want to be, I don't want to sound melodramatic, but it, not a fight to the death, but it, it could have been deadly. It could have turned deadly very fast. Right. And I, I thought that would have done better because there's not a lot of stuff out there about guardian angels really doing stuff like mm -hmm. in, in the real world. Thought that would have done better. I'll link it for you down below. If you haven't seen that video, it's a great one. It's one of my favorites. Another one that surprised me that didn't do all that well was the one where I, I talked about, I think it was six ways that a Catholic husband and father can mm -hmm. protect his family. Didn't do great. Didn't do great, but you know, I mean. But if, even if one person who was supposed to see it saw it and you help one person, I mean, and I think that that's a, also a struggle is not being so into the numbers, numbers right. of it and just whoever's supposed to see it's going to see it and hopefully the Lord can use our little offerings that we try to do 
you know, to help somebody else. And, and I remember saying in the video, hey, guys, if there's something I'm not doing that you're doing that's mm -hmm. great, please right. put it in the kind. I didn't Definitely. get any of those. <clears throat> but I did get, I have, I had one guy say, this video deserves way more right. views. Right. And I, I was like, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I had a few ladies talk about what their husbands do or don't do, mm -hmm. unfortunately. But yeah, I, you know, my, again, it, it's not about the amount of views. I, I in terms of, Ego. I, I just want to know that I'm helping somebody. I'm not spinning my wheels and not. Right. And I think the amount of work that goes into it. And I think that that's also a factor. Like you put in all this work, time, energy, whatever effort. And right. then if it just doesn't hit, then you right. can feel like, wow, that was, what was the point of it? It's funny, but you know, I did gain a lot of subscribers very quickly. I had a bunch to begin with because of the work I do in a lot of the uh, comment sections. Mm -hmm. Fellow Catholics would see that and I'd, and I'd get comments like, hey, Great response, blah, blah, blah. And then I noticed my, I mean, without even having a channel, really, I had like, I think 300 something subscribers already just from the comments and in in the way I was engaging. Uh, but then once you put, thank you, put out on your your channel that I was starting a channel and all that, of course, I, I went up exponentially. And I, and I do want to say that since you hit the thousand, if you remember, I did say that I was going to do a giveaway on my channel once you hit a thousand. So I think I have to now deliver on that promise. You so think? I am going to be hosting the giveaway on my channel. I think I'm going to be giving away a Blessed Is She planner. And I think I'm going to give away maybe a Dr. Peter Kwasniewski book, something like that. I'm going to put a little thing together and I'll work out the details with you over on my channel. But it doesn't, it didn't hurt my channel, you know, that I'm a Nepo hubby. You've heard the term Nepo baby. I, I, the kids are saying that word. No, that you term built out. your channel on your own. No. You didn't need me. Yeah. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have, you know, no. half the, but it was really cool. One of the videos I did, I think it was the one I did on Vigano. Um, Keith Nestor commented on my video. And I tried so hard not to fangirl, like the girls called it, or daughters called it. But I just love Keith. The, the guy is awesome. He is. He's such a great guy. Yeah, Keith and Estelle, we just love them. They're, they're doing such great work. And I think that that's what's so cool about YouTube and Catholics that are out here. Everybody has their own little spot and their niche of what they talk about and how they help serve Christ's people with the work that they do on YouTube. And Keith and Estelle are doing amazing work over there on their side. And they're always so supportive of other Catholics and never tear other Catholics down. They're nope. just building up you know, the kingdom of God for, you know, his glory. And I'm just so thankful that we've gotten to run into them a little bit on, on in online spaces. And I hope one day we get to meet them in real life because be they awesome. are good people. He's a rock star. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, the, he is. He's I so mean, cool. The way, I mean, the way he pre and he was a preacher. You right. Know, he would, and it comes through. Like oh he's my got goodness. that fire he's in so him. Dynamic. And it's just so he's awesome. Just, and, and what's obvious about him, and you can't fake this. I'm no. sorry, but you cannot fake this. The man is so genuine and he's just got such a genuine love for Christ and for for fellow Christians and that comes through. Right. And, and the way he does it and is his so way, dynamic. And, the way that, and he, his personality is very similar to yours. Like yeah, how he yeah. doesn't he like, get hold snarky. back. Like I, love when people, like, I love when he gets snarky. Those are his, you always show me those. Like You yeah, always think that yeah. those are always the best. So if you're not following Keith, I, I don't know what you're doing with I'd your like life. To, yeah, but I'd if, like to know. If you're not, you know, please subscribe to Keith. He's got a huge channel. channel. So I'll link it for you down below. But most, most of your, they have to be. He's got so a all in all, YouTube has been a positive experience for our family. It's blessed our family in, in many ways. And if you are so inclined to use real estate for life, I would greatly appreciate it. Let them know Dina from A Catholic Wife sent you. I do share a lot of links in the description boxes of my video. A lot of them are affiliate links. It doesn't cost you anything more to use them. And it's just a small way that you can help support my channel and what I'm trying to do here. Ready to go? I'm ready to go. All right. And until next time. Thanks, everybody. Take care and God bless. Padre Pio, order pro nobis. We'll see you next time.